Hello, everyone. Put my other light on here. <laughs> I realize my ring light's not on. Let's get that going. Ah, oh. Let's see what happened. There we go. Here we go. <laughs> oh, technology. I'm always fiddling, and I had a few moments just now to try to get my blue yeti and my larger. Lord of Rio camera and my ring light going. Here I am. Darling Corbett here. Welcome to Get Unstuck Now. I had a few minutes in between clients. I had a cancellation, a lovely person got, which is fine. And I thought, I'll go do my podcast. I've been meaning to do one. So it wasn't last week I did it, but a couple of weeks ago. So I'm catching up. <laughs> So I believe that everyone's capable of getting unstuck throughout the life cycle. I do. And anyone that knows me knows that I'm telling the truth. That is my belief. Does everybody get unstuck? No. Human beings are flawed and we have much unfairness in the world. Not always an easy feat to do. Life goes like this. <laughs> Some people may feel it goes like this, but honestly, it can go like that again. For anyone that's viewing this on YouTube. Yes, for all of you who are listening to my podcast, you can see this also on YouTube. You want to see my expressions, but you can hear my voice, which is certainly not monotone. I know that. <laughs> all right, let's get started. I talked about going to New York a few weeks ago, and I had a, the best time. It reinforced the idea that I am an extrovert because I forget that and a friend of mine's son-in-law said, you get your energy from people, and that's me. And as much as I love doing virtual therapy, it's helped me a lot because of the, I'm older and hopefully wiser, but it gives me opportunity to be able to do it right from my home. And for many years, I did it from an office and saw many, many people, far more than I see now. But when I question, oh, am I an introvert? Also a little bit of introversion within me because I happen to love to read and love to write, but no, my energy is from people. And again, as much as I love doing virtual therapy, I love conferences such as live conferences, which I just came back from in New York. And I said this before, we all cheered each other on. I wasn't pitching a book, but some people really had amazing stories. And I listened to their pitches and I was just taken in by it. So again, I said this last time, I will buy their books when it comes out. And I hope they do. I hope they do. I hope they're successful. It always, be, I'm one of these people that believes in bringing everybody up, not bringing you down. Well, it's not fair. If they are ahead of you, that's not fair. Well, that's life. And you know what? To me, that helps you aspire. They inspire to get us to aspire. So here's this extrovert. Maybe I have about maybe 10% introvert in me talking and looking forward to my next live conference, which is. Well, I'll just say this. I don't like to tell when or where I'm going until I get back. But in the not so distant future, I will be going to another similar conference to meet wonderful people, like-minded people like myself. And I can't wait. Okay, enough about that. Except to say, I love New York and can't wait to go back next year. I'm going to talk about a few things today. <laughs> I'm going to a title. You'll see it on the, the program notes. Close the door. College age mood disorders and elephants and books. <laughs> okay, let's start with close the door. Remember, well, boomers, you might, if you'd like disco, which I did. <laughs> it was fun to dance to. It was very sultry and sexy. I'm a nerd, and I was always a nerd at heart, but I didn't look like a nerd. I wore flowers in my hair sometimes and had Farrah Fawcett hair and went out dancing. I was still a nerd, though. And very much, well, 
not long after I tried being someone I really wasn't being meant to be, but whatever, we'll leave it. <laughs> I tend to be very hard on myself and wonder why I did a few things. Some people say, you're crazy, who cares? But I did. <laughs> I even looked at some people connected to some people from 30 years ago, trying to figure it out. I've, I've mentioned this before. And I've let it go. Let it go. I think Teddy Pendergrass may have saying that also. I'm meandering. Close the door. It was one of his songs. Why do I say this? We're talking about boundaries. And I want to bring up an issue that I think is important. And you might say, you're being judgmental. Maybe I am. But I see people that have endured when there's been lack of boundaries by parental figures. So we're going to start with Britney Spears. We know that Miss Spears suffered gravely. We all know that. And, I, and I'm sorry that she did. And I'm sorry that her family took advantage of her talent and her wealth. And she got her got rid of that conservative ship and whether it was merited for some of the time, I don't know. I don't know. Probably, but it was protracted and it should not have been. With that said, Miss Spears has decided to be her all. She said she's writing a book. Fine. But she's bearing it all on Instagram. I don't know if she wants to show off her lovely figure because she's married now to somebody much younger than her who I think he's a personal trainer. I'm not really sure. But she has adolescent boys. This is my point. If she wants to be her all behind closed doors, go ahead. They want to frolic in the sand together. Go ahead again. She has adolescent boys. And no matter what people think about the father of these boys, I, I don't know anything about him. I'm sure that he's got his flaws also. And Nicki Minaj is coming out saying, you know, yelling and calling him a clown because Britney loves her children. I don't doubt that Britney loves her children, but Britney needs to think about those children more carefully and think about the fact that adolescent boys, children in period, but adolescent boys that want to hear about from their friends that they saw their mother on Instagram with no clothes on. So hopefully she learns. And apparently, this is where I agree with Mr. Federley, her, her ex-husband. They probably embarrassed. And I have no doubt. As a matter of fact, when I heard all these people say, well, poor Brittany, so what? No, no. She is in the public eye. She does not need attention. She is wealthy. She is beautiful. She got her rights back as she should, and she should celebrate that. And if she wants to be around in a book where it's in print, fine. But she has adolescent boys, and they don't want to hear about their mother or see their mother naked. Now, you might say, well, she's expressing herself. I've seen these statements. This is Western culture. This is not in the middle of East, you know what, East Cupcake. This is where Naked bodies are often viewed as a sexualizing of themselves, whether you want to agree or not. She did not, I just saw one of them in the New York Post of her like giving a scanty eye. She was not posing to say, look at my anatomy. People aren't looking at these pictures and say, wow, she's a strong woman. No, they're looking at them for other reasons. So close the door and do whatever you want behind closed doors. As Teddy Pendergrass sang long ago. And back then you didn't see this as much. No, there was Playboy and all that, but there was no internet to just show it all. So moving on, next we have Gwyneth Paltrow. Again, Miss Paltrow is quite talented, although she, unlike Miss Spears, and like the next person we're going to talk about, had a head start. Good for her. Blythe Dana, Bruce Paltrow were her parents, are her parents. Life is alive. Bruce no longer is. She goes and celebrates how good she is. She is good, but she did get that head start. Okay. But no matter what, she took it and she ran with it. And she's an extremely skillful and talented actor. A few years ago, she decided to go on Rob Lowe's podcast and told him that his wife taught her how to refine her oral sex techniques or techniques. Really now? Do we all need to know that? But she has a daughter and a son that are adolescents. I think her daughter is about 18. She's done a fine job protecting them. She has. And I'm sure they're fine young people. And maybe they say, oh, that's my mom. Well, 
I don't think they want to hear about their mother's sex life. Take my word for it. Children don't want to hear about their parents' sexual goings on, goings on, yeah. Or parents don't want to hear about their children's. Okay, that was a few years ago. More recently, she told Haley Bieber, Justin Bieber's wife, whose father is Stephen Baldwin, if you don't know, and his brother is Alice, the Baldwin brothers. She told Haley Bieber that she and Stephen, she jumped in the closet and had sex with him. Uh, I'm sorry, but uh, I don't think Miss Bieber wants to know about her father's sex life. And I'm not sure Mr. Baldwin wants to share that either. Boundaries. Miss Spears, Miss Paltrow. Close the door, unzip there, but not for the whole world to hear because your children and their friends are hearing this. Finally, Madonna, my generation. <laughs> Madonna has been exhibitionistic for years. Her daughter, I don't know. Her son, to my knowledge, went to live with his father. Guy something, I forget his last name, a British director who makes good films. I'm sure that he loves his mother. I've, I've seen, I mean, I don't watch these things. They just pop up. Again, boundaries. Think about your kids. So, and Miss Madonna is getting older, whether she likes it or not. We're all getting old. I think, as a matter of fact, she and Britney Spears, she had a kiss years ago and I think Britney Spears referred to her as somebody old, and I don't think she liked it. I, I don't know. I don't remember much about it, but I think it's important. Boundaries are important. Children need to see their parents as in a different light, and, and they'll find out soon enough. But teenagers don't need to hear these things or want to know that their parents are sexual beings, even though they are. They wouldn't be here if they weren't. Boundaries. I don't care what you've endured. Don't put your children through embarrassment. And it's embarrassing. And they may not admit that, but it is. So I think it's important. So close the door. Listen to Teddy. Teddy's gone. He's long gone also. He died a long time ago. I forget. I think he was in a car crash and became disabled. But he was fun to listen to and to dance to and alluding to. <laughs> now it's let it all hang out. All right. Close the door. Next, I want to talk about, I just dropped a piece of paper, but I know it's the whole issue of college depression and anxiety. I see college students. I posted this on Instagram because I find it so disturbing. College students have become more depressed than ever, more anxious. Yes, we know the pandemic exacerbated all of this, but it started long before 2013 to 2021. Depression increased 135%. Anxiety increased 110%. And I think this is absolutely true because most people that enter therapy are either anxious or depressed. And if not, relationship issues, so on. That's, that's who I see, often relationships. And, but what gets tapped into is a mood disorder, which often leads to anxiety and depression. Suicide is the third leading cause of death for college students. I think I got that right. This is my piece of paper has. I'm going to look it up, actually. I have it right on my iPhone. So I am going to make sure I'm correct on that. Yeah, suicide is the third leading cause. Now, you might say, well, they've got all these stresses, and they do. But there's always, there's always been stresses. I think there's a much more layered problem in our society that gives this nihilistic view of life, a hopelessness, and an inability to see beyond the horizon. And I've said this on Instagram, we must continue to give children, teenagers, adults, all through the life cycle, a sense of hope. We want our adolescents, college students, to be able to have those lush lights, lives, lives that they deserve. And we see so many things where they just kill themselves. That college student, I believe in California, a parent, of course, they were devastated. Some, she was defending someone and then something came back at her. It is so, so disturbing to see 
this this beyond hopelessness of life and, and an ability to see that they can get past this what may be horrible obstacles. In, indeed, I have no doubt, but so we must keep giving young people hope. Adults too, because nothing stays the same. I say this over and over. And as I've said in my book, <laughs> my book that's been around for a few years, stop depriving the world of you. We want them to stop depriving the world of them. We want them to be here to do that. But collateral beauty, we must look for the collateral beauty. There's a lot of darkness in the world. One little flicker of light can change a room. I'm going to say this over and over. So forgive me if I'm repeating myself. You know, you think about when you see somebody light a match and they see a face come up. One match. That's all it takes. And then my, my favorite metaphor, of course, is the book. We want the book to end with thick, lush, full of many chapters. Now, we don't always have control over that. Car accidents, illnesses, so on. That rob children of a longer life. But we don't want them to take their lives. We want them to have the opportunity, at least, to have a lush, thick book full of wonderful chapters so that the end even can say, wow, what a great book that was. Yeah, I had some challenging chapters to get through. What a riveting end also. That's what I want for all of them. And I will do my best in my role as therapist, as a writer. I don't speak anymore that much, but, you know, here I am speaking. So, so I want that for our young people that are so disheartened about life. We must help them see the collateral beauty. We must help them see that they can turn the page and it will change. We must. All right. See, I'm doing a rather quick one, I think, today. Yeah, because I have to go in about 10 minutes. So I'm going to finish up here with books, 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 and elephants, elephants, elephants. <laughs> I don't post much on Facebook, but other than articles and podcasts, but I post those elephant videos because I adore elephants. Elephants, oh my God, they are such amazing, amazing mammals. I read somewhere that they can die of a broken heart. Also, they just, they're so enchanting. They're so loving. They the herd sticks together. I, my husband told me a story that he saw, read. I couldn't even listen to it. So don't listen to this if you don't want to hear a sad story. But I think they were trying to rescue an elephant and they all went over the cliff. That's how much they're connected. We must not ignore the fact that animals, some of these animals indeed have human qualities. I guess I've said indeed a couple of times. I don't know why, but anyway, they do have human qualities. They do. They're not humans, of course not. But we must remind ourselves we don't know the connection that goes from our species, the highest of all, down to some of those mammals. So I'm going to tell you a book I read that I almost, again, didn't want to read. I thought, why would I want to read a book about a circus? Well, for those of you who did not read Water for Elephants, I highly recommend it. It is a, another gorgeous story. Sarah Gruen, I believe her name is the author. And it is not just a story about a circus. That's just really the, the background, the scenery. It's about hardship, getting through major loss and hardship, finding purpose, finding a connection, overcoming uh, evil might be too strong, but yeah, evil people, bad people, celebrating the majesty of animals like the elephant that's in there that has a main role and finally finding again meaning but not just at some point in life throughout the life cycle even at the end of the life cycle and I don't want to tell you any more you have to read the book to find out again it transports you to another another world and it reminds you of the resilience of the human spirit character overcoming much suffering. And that's what our young people need to see. Human suffering is nothing new. Do I wish it upon anybody? No, <laughs> not at all. And sometimes I even say to clients, I don't have the magic wand. wand. I wish I did. <laughs> In a hurry, you can always tell. 
I wish I did because there's no rabbits out of my hat. All I can do is help people be the best they can be, but I can't want it more for them than they want for themselves. And I can't do it. I can guide. I can say, this is what you might want to try. You may have tried it. Many people have tried many things, but you might have to try it again and again and again. And maybe that fourth time, if three is a time, if that doesn't work, that fourth time, a fifth time, a sixth time, just might. Okay. So <laughs> if you want to read my latest article, which can relate to this, it's called The Red Lines, Embracing the Red Lines in You Might Shine. It's on Biz Catalyst 360, one of the places I write. And that's it. Okay. You can go to my website, which is very antiquated. I have there's reasons I have not touched it. And I'm waiting for some things to unfold. And it may take a good six months to a year. I'm just going to leave it there for now. But there, there are reasons. So, But you can find me. I'm still, I speak, but not, like I said, I don't go hunting for speaking engagements. I write. I'm a therapist. I'm a hypnotherapist. And now you, um, well, I do podcasting too. But I see this more. I don't get paid for this. I don't have any sponsors. And I do my own thing. All right. On that note, I just put my glasses on to put my music on. Come back and stop depriving the world of you. Get unstuck. Keep working at it. If it doesn't work once, twice, three times, keep doing it. It will happen. It will. But you've got to persist. It's not easy. And if you say, well, it's easier for so-and-so, it may be. So what are you going to do? You're going to give up because it's easier for so-and-so? Adversity is difficult. We know adversity is heavy, but by going and going and going, it does help you be able to see that, that wonderful golden glow of success in whatever form that is. All right. Give it a, your best shot. All right, everyone. Until next time. Wow. <laughs>